Talk to me about water itself. There are lots of countries that really struggle for water. It doesn't always feel like this country struggles for water, but water is another precious resource. Yes, I think I think often we've all taken water for granted over here. Our water bills aren't expensive. It's it's usually not much a month at all, and you don't have to think about it. Um, I previously lived in a country where we had a water shortage, and we had a maximum of 50 litres per person per day. So you're, you're there in the shower with the buckets underneath your feet, and you're catching everything you yeah, can. Yeah. And then you're using that to flush the, the WC, or you're collecting rainwater and then connecting that up to the WCs to be able to use it, or you're using that water into your swimming pools. That was, for me, a big eye-opener as to, to just how much of a precious re, uh, resource water was. I remember as a family, we drove past um, this uh, massive reservoir um, just outside Cape Town, and it was um, acres and acres of land. And it was an old vineyard that they'd taken some of the land, and you could see kind of the, the old vine branches and trees and stuff. And we'd seen a picture of what it was when it was full, and we went and saw a picture of it, and we went and saw it physically when it was empty. Mm. And we stood there with the kids and said, this is, this is why we need to be protective and careful of it. And it's not about waxing lyrical and, and, and shouting at people. It's just about making small changes each day. So if that means reducing the amount of time you shower by a minute, if that means using wastewater recovery to reduce the energy, then the small changes make a huge difference. How long have you been in the construction industry? So I've been in construction for nearly 20 years. I started out as a on-the-tools plumber, and very quickly I you know, started my own business. And I thoroughly enjoyed working um, you know, in people's properties. I enjoyed the trust that they gave to me uh, to provide a, a finished product, uh, whatever that might be, whether it be big or small. And when the opportunity came to work for ShowerSave, it was a no-brainer. It was a get back to my roots mm. um, and make a positive change. Mm. Um, and it's been a, a, a really enjoyable experience the last couple of years. What is it you do for ShowerSave? So I'm the technical manager for ShowerSave. So one of the things I, I do is um, I look at things like the installation manuals, the, the technical kind of documents, uh, I look at uh, developing new products or making our current products more efficient or easier to install. I try and look at it from an installer point of view and think, how could it be easier for them mm. so that they can be in and out as quick as possible? And also so that they don't have to think about it. Once they've installed it, it's done. And um, I, I spend a lot of time working with commercial projects as well and, and looking at their designs for future projects um, and looking at um, you know, projects where we can install wastewater recovery as an after installation to so see how retro, can, retro exactly stuff. retrofitting yeah <clears throat> and obviously there's a lot to overcome there because you've got plant rooms which are full of stuff already or you've got the the risers in the corridors which have got no space to breathe in mm. but there's plenty of options there's plenty of projects out there where they can install it which can make a huge difference and if you think of the kind of commercial projects where you know take hotels for instance a hotelier will have you know a 200 bedrooms they could easily be saving Eighty, ninety thousand pound a year on the hot water bill. Nineteen thousand pounds a year. Eighty to ninety thousand pound a year. Eighty to ninety thousand pounds a year can be saved by a hotel if you've got two hundred bedrooms. Yeah. If you have Waste technology water. like Waste shower water. save or wastewater heat recovery. Yeah. So you look at you projects that you've got coming on. We come, we come and help you design it. We come and see where it can work, what bedrooms it will work for. What's the best way to implement it? The easiest way for installers, the easiest way if you ever want to do visual inspections. And then you can be saving money every year. And it's just, you know, it's, it's money on your profit margins. So why, I'm just thinking, you, you mentioned about profit margins here. I'm just wondering why these hotels are not knocking on your door and saying, look, we need to get this because that's a significant amount of money that they can save each year. It is, it's a massive saving. I think the biggest challenge is, that a lot of these projects now which are being built today, you, you, there's, there's cranes all over London. Um, a lot of these projects, the designs were done seven, eight years ago, and it's gone through years and years of design stages and planning applications. But now there is positive change. So there is you know, the sustainability statements that they've got to make for every commercial building. A sustainability consultancy. In that sustainability uh, consultation that they've put forward to planning, that will have measures like wastewater heat recovery. Um, and we're starting to see those coming in now. We're starting to see consultants come and discuss and, and ask the best ways to install it and to implement it mm. and the best way to maximize efficiencies. So if someone is listening to this podcast and they're like, wow, I need to find out if we can get this in because we've not specified it, but that's a significant amount. Yeah. What, what process would they need to go through? Is it, is it too late? Would it need no. to be specified already? No, not at all. There are very, very, very few 
projects where it is too late. So the two we talked about in Scotland, yeah. they were last minute. You know, they were, building was nearly up. So you're talking uh, Reba stage three or yeah. were they at Reba stage four? Um, they were Reba stage four, I think it was. Okay. Um, and so they were, building was pretty much nearly watertight. They hadn't poured the main slabs yet, but they've done all the foundations and they built the frames. And they gave us a call and wanted to discuss the options. And I spent some time on site with the architects, with the um, project managers there and the M&E consultants, because there's a lot of people involved in obviously commercial projects. Um, we worked out a plan which was beneficial to that project, which would be um, the most cost effective, but also give the most you know gain uh, for the lifespan of the building, really. Um, so there isn't an op a project which is too late. If you've, you've got foundations in and you're starting to put the steels in, give us a call. Mm. If you've got the, the steels in and the roof's going on and the windows are going in, well, you still got your bathrooms to do. Give us a call um, because there is plenty of option to make that small marginal gain. There's lots of opportunities. I think in the hotel, that's a significant gain. Exactly. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I mean, hotels are most likely nowadays, they're all built where it's a carbon copy of each of the, each level. So you've got you know a small room with a small bathroom pod and often they're built off site um, and they are literally just plug in to the next one, plug the next one in plug the next one in as you go up. And there's always an option for those risers to be visible. They're always accessible. You can stick wastewater recovery in one of those. For hotels, it's even easier. You could feed the two showers above into one unit. So if you've got 200 rooms, you may only need 100 units. So you're reducing the actual cost of the outlay, but you're maximizing your efficiencies. How much generally does sh does the unit cost? I gu I'm guessing also that the cost of installation is probably a little bit higher as well for the plumber. Uh, yes, yeah, so there's different projects will be yeah. uh, more expensive. So in essence, we have three products we have, uh, and they're all the same pipe. So 2.1 meter long pipe goes into three options. So it's a normal gravity fed unit for domestic dwellings. There is, uh, well, it can be used commercially as well. We've also got the pumped version. So anywhere where the shower is the same level, mm -hmm. so you haven't got the benefits of gravity. And then we have a commercial unit where it's four of the pipes together, and it's got a distributor cap at the top at the bottom so the wastewater can come in from you know a hotel for instance from a load of rooms can come in and can be distributed between 4 8 12 16 whatever the project might be and we'll design that we'll go through the design with them and that will be really easy for them to install mm -hmm. the normal unit alone is around you know between 400 to, to, to 450 and then the commercial units can be more expensive but there's plenty of capex there for commercial projects for domestics obviously it's you know it's off your profit and loss um, it's from your balance sheets um, unless you're in a social housing scenario exactly. where you're you can put that in the capex sheets for years yeah, yeah. And, and that's often the biggest you know area which we don't often talk about social homes make up a huge proportion of the properties in the uk you think of the the largest you know social providers out there they could have 30 40 50 000 project, uh, properties and every single year they'll be doing a new bathroom in a, you know a proportion of those properties if they install the unit there and then they're reducing the energy bill for the most vulnerable people the tenants who are often on the poverty line anyway but they're putting on their capex sheet so they're making a, the home more efficient and, and, and cost saving for the tenants so they're making a positive uh, um, impact on their lives but they're also making a positive impact on their profit and loss sheet as well so it becomes something that isn't a massive outlay of, at the start it can be spread over those years and so it makes a huge difference Every year, there are thousands of properties where they get a new bathroom or a new kitchen. And that's, you know, they need to be done. But while they're doing that, it's the perfect opportunity mm. to stick a shower safe wastewater heat recovery unit in. I'm thinking here of the cost of the winter fuel allowance and if that is more or less than the installation cost of shower safe. Well, you often find that, you know, for social homes anyway, a lot of the plumbers are, are in house. Um, some of the larger firms, they might be outsourced, but a lot of the, the tradesmen and women, yeah. are already within the company anyway. So they're salaried. So you're giving them a little bit more work to do. You're giving them some skills so they can take it to, to future projects. And it's not a massive cost. The winter fuel allowance, you know, what is it now, about £250 a year, subject to you know people's needs uh, and their benefit status. But that could make a huge difference. So if, if the government were to say, we'll do the winter fuel allowance and we'll make sure that every social home has one of these installed when they do a new bathroom, that'll make a huge difference. The winter fuel allowance, well, you've still got to heat the homes. You've still got to yeah. make the home efficient. Yeah. Uh, we still want to make that home really, really kind of warm and healthy for them. But it makes a huge difference on the EPC as well. Because that's the element of cost, of heat, and of living yeah. that doesn't really get accounted for. The heat that goes down the drain 
is forgotten. It, it's almost like heating up the space and leaving the window open. Exactly. Yeah, and, and so many times we, we talk to people, if you ever go to a, a self-build show uh, or go and speak to somebody that's doing a self-build, you talk to them about kind of some of these uh, opportunities and some of these um, things they can install. They're not necessarily bothered because they want a the bigger kitchen. You know, the money's going to the bathrooms, to the kitchens, to the nice fireplaces and things mm. like that. Mm. Whereas they can actually make a massive difference with just these small devices, small technologies uh, in the homes. And it's, it's a huge difference. I love the fact, just going back to the origin for you, you started off as a plumber and now where you're working at the moment, making real difference with the, the shower save, the wastewater heat recovery. You mentioned that you have got an involvement with uh, research and development and coming up with new products. Yeah. I'm wondering if you could just share some of the stuff that you're working on at the moment and what we can expect in the future, where your thinking is. Um, yeah, so as I say, we're constantly looking for ways to make the product more efficient and making it easier for installers. So there are changes coming in the future. So the most recent product is the QB121XE. That's the, the biggest change we've made. So we've got the same length pipe as we've always had, but we've just made it that little bit more efficient by using a different top, which has made it easier for installers as well. What is the top that you've used? How is it different? What is it? So before you used to use a series of elbows um, and it took up a bit of space and those elbows would sit over the top of the pipe. So the new product goes inside the pipe rather than over the top. So it's one less area of failure as well because you're going internally. So it's going with the water flow, if you like. And what we're looking to do in the future is just to make those more efficient. So... If we can make that uh, more compact, mm. um, if we can make it easier for installers, mm. it'd be amazing if we could just have a little press the button and it, it flies on the wall, a bit like the Grinch where she's putting the Christmas tree lights on the on the on the roof. But it's not going to happen. Well, um, don't you know? Don't don't write yourself <laughs> off that quickly, Cameron. You, no, that that might come up with something. <laughs> that'll be my ten year old that comes up with that. Um, <laughs> but we we're looking for ways always to make the product the products more efficient. So any way we can make it quicker for installers in essence we make it cheaper for for installers mm. uh, any way we can re reduce their time on the tools and their times putting things in mm. it can make a huge difference to them because we want them to be you know they've got an awful lot of work to do we are looking at just making the kind of subtle changes and we're working with with other companies as well to to make make a big difference for a lot of people out there cameron we are in a position now in the podcast where we can go to the demolition zone this area is where we talk about myths that need to be debunked mm. and put straight. Are you ready to do it? Yes, let's go. Okay, let's do it. Well, Cameron, we are in the demolition zone and you have built this monstrosity of a tower. Thanks. I think that it is completing with probably World Trade Center okay. in terms of height, scaled down. But anyway, uh, for people that are listening, there is this humongous tower that is based on four pillars and it has what I call a googly eye on the top of the tower. Yep. What does it represent? Height for me. It is just all about being the biggest. Okay. <laughs> okay. It is big. It is tall. It is big and it is unique. Um, so that's, that's me. <laughs> so this represents you. Yes, yeah. <laughs> particularly the Google Eye, the fact that it's bald on the top also. <laughs> okay, so you've built this here to represent a myth. Yeah. What is the myth that you're going to be discussing? The myth is that wastewater heat recovery won't work in our project. I've heard a number of times from design teams or from developers or you know project managers, that's just not going to work. There's no chance that's going to work. It doesn't save energy. It doesn't actually say what it does. It's just a gimmick but it really does work. Um, the proof really is in the pudding of putting your hand at the bottom and putting your hand at the top. Mm. And we've got the data that can you know, prove and can measure what it works. But even the data doesn't convince people. So the myth for me is that I often hear is that it's, it's a gimmick and it doesn't do anything. I know because we've used this on a number of the projects that we have consulted on. As you know, we've got a sustainability and energy consultancy and of the projects that we use wastewater heat recovery on, it absolutely does very, very well in. Uh, so I can attest that that myth absolutely needs to be debunked because it's not true yeah. in any way, shape or form. But Cameron, the honor is yours. Please right. destroy the myth. I love that. A removal of one of the pillars. Yep. 
causes it to come crashing down. I love that. Cameron, just as a last thing, as we come to the end of the time that, that we spend together, what is the one thing that you think is really useful for architects to know when they come up with some resistance, either internally mm -hmm. or externally, to using a technology like wastewater heat recovery? I think when they understand the real benefits in terms of pounds and pennies for whether it be the owners of the project or whether it be the, you know, the, the future homeowners or tenants, when they understand the amount that it can save and the energy that it reduces, it makes a huge difference because when people see those figures and they believe them and, and they're explained to them clearly in a way that they understand when they're able to see and feel that it works, that then resistance is what is washed away completely. A number of times when I've spoken to people and explained to them and gone through for anyone that's physically touched, you know, felt the, the demonstration rigs that we've built and we have around, uh, we've got a couple around the country and, and some in the factory in Holland too. It's amazing watching people when they go and they put their hand on the bottom and they put their hand at the top and they turn around and always it's a face of, oh wow, it really does work. And every single time, I mean, I've heard it countless times now, it really does work. Mm -hmm. So helping architects, helping designers, helping project managers understand that it can have a massive impact on the efficiency of a home and reduction of the energy um, for the project and ultimately the reduction in the costs to provide domestic hot water for showering. So where can people go to actually get hands on with this and, and see and feel the technology for themselves? Yeah, so you can. we've got um, a demonstration rig in the middle of England um, in Swaddling Coats and we've got one in Cookstown uh, in Northern Ireland and we've got one in um, Holland in Emmen where our factory is. But get in touch. You know, we're, we're happy to meet people there. We're happy to talk to people and we're happy to discuss their projects and how we can help them to get a, an efficient and a cost effective home and building. Cameron, it's been great speaking with you today. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks, Dan. What is there that you can share with the listeners mm -hmm. that will help them to make all of the difference in their role or in what their aspiration is? For me, I think it's the education. When people understand the, the technologies, uh, and there's plenty of them out there, when people understand uh, specifically our technology, wastewater heat recovery, when they understand how it works and what the impact is, they're then able to describe and to, to talk to their clients, talk to the people they're working with, and they're able to have some confidence in a product that works. It helps them, uh, it gives them the confidence that they're using a product which works. And I think it also, for installers, um, some of the work I'm doing is with, with colleges and helping apprentices. When they can go on sites and say to their bosses, I know what this is, I'll install it for you. We're giving them another feather in their cap of, of something that they're, that education that they've got, something else that they can install, something else that they can kind of take the lead on and helping them become the leaders of the future. So I think f for us, and a lot of it is about education, educating um, consultants, designers, SAP assessors, uh, installers, colleges, helping them all understand. And that will be by showing them how it works as well, but helping them understand the benefits. I love that. I think the message that I've heard from you today is if you've not heard of wastewater heat recovery, then not only are you missing out, yeah. but you're giving someone a property that's just not as good as it could be. Exactly that, yeah. Cameron, it's been great having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching to the end. Please remember to like, to share, and to subscribe. Also, I think you'll really like this one.